In 2008, Pak Salin lived in a small village in West Java, Indonesia. He worked as a casual agricultural worker and had a family of one wife and three kids. He had a very modest home and what most would call a less than average life, but he was getting by. That was until everything changed. What happened? How did it affect him? And what does his situation say about poverty as a whole? Pak Salin's situation. When the 2008 financial crisis hit, there was a ripple effect on everything from food to transportation to the cost of living. You see, before the crisis, Pak Salin worked for local farmers in the area, helping them with menial tasks and getting paid for his work. On a good day, he earned up to 10,000 rupiahs, about $2 at the time, for work in the fields. It's hard enough to imagine living on $2 per day, but it only got worse when the recession hit and fertilizer costs went up. Farmers had to cut their losses, deciding to stop hiring workers instead of underpaying them. This left Pak Salin unemployed, and like the other farmers, Pak Salin and his family had to adapt. The wife left for Jakarta 80 miles away from home to get a job as a leave-in maid. The eldest son, a bright student, had no choice but to drop out at the age of 13 to work in a construction site. His two siblings were sent off to their grandparents. With all their life changes, however, their financial situation didn't improve. Pak Salin's wife wasn't making enough to feed the children, nor were the children able to go to school. Pak Salin himself wasn't well off. With no job, he had no means to make money. No money meant no food. No food meant that he was too weak to find or do any physical work. He couldn't join his son at the construction site because at the age of 40, he was just too old to be an apprentice. Pak Salin had to get by on the roughly nine pounds of subsidized rice he got every week from the government and on fish he caught at a nearby lake. And so, with his wife gone and his children away, he spent his days at home, alone, wondering if one day, his situation would change for the better. Poverty in the modern day. According to the United States Census Bureau, 37.2 million people in the U.S. lived in poverty in 2020, which represents just over 11% of the population. On a global scale, the numbers are much higher. According to World Bank estimates, extreme poverty, defined as living on less than $1.90 a day, affects 9.2% of the world population. And it's over 640 million people who are at the very bottom of the poverty well. This number is a huge improvement from the 36% in 1990, but still a far cry from great. For decades now, we as a species have been making a combined effort to eradicate poverty, but the cancerous condition seems to persist regardless of our attempts at wiping it out. Coupled that with the breakout of COVID-19 and it becomes clear that poverty went on the rise in recent years, estimates show that as many as 97 million people fell into extreme poverty in 2020. Why all these huge numbers? Why is poverty and hunger and starvation such a present entity in the modern day? The poverty trap. A poverty trap makes it very difficult for people to escape poverty. It is a self-reinforcing cycle that once started, continues to persist unless there is outside intervention. Families trapped in the cycle of poverty have few to no resources and are surrounded by several factors that make it nearly impossible to break the cycle. Impoverished individuals do not have access to economic and social resources as a result of their poverty. This could mean that the poor remain poor throughout their lives. Poverty traps usually occur in generally developing and underdeveloped countries and are often caused by a lack of capital. There are other causes, however, most of which work hand in hand to create a web of problems that are nearly impossible to solve on your own. Causes of poverty traps. 1. Generational poverty. Generational poverty is perhaps the most important initiator of a poverty trap. A person who is born into an impoverished home has the odds stacked against him from the very beginning. Pak Salin's situation is a typical example. Pak Salin is unemployed and his wife doesn't make enough to sustain everyone. The firstborn, who is meant to be in school, dropped out so he can help make ends meet. This puts him at risk of poverty since he will probably not earn as much doing odd jobs on the construction site as he would if he had studied and got a job. If he were to have children, they would most likely be impoverished as well, leading to a cycle of generational poverty. Wait here, do you know that you are likely to be in a poverty trap and not be aware of it? To answer your question, click the like button and we'll reveal how. 2. High cost of living. For the last 13 years, the federal minimum wage in the United States has been $7.25 per hour. And in that same time, America has seen several inflations, a pandemic, and many more. The minimum wage in the United States is no longer a living wage. Minimum wage earners continue to struggle to make ends meet. The current cost of living is over $20,000 per year per person. If you factor in taxes and unforeseen costs, the number becomes much higher. Most people have to juggle multiple jobs to even come remotely close to being able to provide for themselves and the rest of the family. The situation is worse in underdeveloped countries. 
By being in such a flimsy situation, it's difficult to maintain a normal day-to-day -day life. Talk more of trying to invest or grow wealth. 3. The Scarcity Mindset A scarcity mindset is when you are so obsessed with what you don't have that it becomes your center of attention. You can't seem to focus on anything else, no matter how hard you try. A scarcity mindset uses up all your attention on the immediate problem or task, or that there isn't much left to think long-term. A person who is below the poverty line will struggle to focus on anything but survival. How to put food on the table. How to pay the debt. How to pay the hospital bills. How to get a job. How to get the next paycheck. An impoverished individual doesn't have the mental freedom to think long-term to think about investing or starting a business. Anything that is too far off into the future seems impossible to achieve or consider because there will always be more pressing matters to attend to. The scarcity mindset also affects in other ways like causing impulsive spending. A poor person is usually unable to afford nice things. The good clothes, the new phone, the expensive drink at school. That deprivation makes them develop a fixation on that desire to the extent that when they do get the money, it's the first thing they get. It's why a poor man who wins a lottery will probably end up poor again, because instead of spending wisely and trying to build wealth by saving and investing, he will spend on all the pleasures he has been deprived of, and in the end, he'd be right back where he started. Four problematic government aid practices. In the more fortunate parts of the world, people who are in poverty receive some form of benefit from the government. This is usually called welfare and is often given in the form of subsidies on food, healthcare, and other expenses. Welfare programs are only accessible to people who fall below a set poverty threshold. This is a good thing since it ensures that the benefits only go to those who need them. It also provides the opportunity to lift people out of poverty. This sounds like a good thing. A great thing, even. But the problem arises when you look at real-world scenarios. Let's say even a family of four, you, your spouse, and two children. The whole family has an annual income below $27,750, the federal poverty threshold for families of four. The government came to the rescue and rolling you into a welfare program. Things feel a bit lighter, as though some load has been let off your back. Then one day, you get a job with more decent pay. Let's say it brings the annual income to around $30,000. This is above the threshold, so the government takes away your welfare benefits. What the government doesn't consider is the fact that you still need to pay for transportation to work, healthcare, and other benefits you no longer have. And since you probably live in a poor or dangerous neighborhood, you are more susceptible to health risks and diseases, which will increase the cost of living. Essentially, the new job paid well enough to disqualify you from welfare programs, but not enough to be sustainable long-term. Getting a new job puts you in a worse position than when you were under welfare programs. Since it is much more financially beneficial to be under welfare programs than not, most people might avoid getting a new job or a better job. The program designed to bring people out of poverty is essentially what's keeping them inside of it. Several other problems keep people in poverty. So many of you probably can't do them all justice in a single video. But is there a solution to the problem? Are there ways to help those in poverty? The solution. It is generally accepted that in order to end the poverty trap, in order to liberate people from poverty, they must be given enough aid so they can be able to raise themselves out of poverty and not so little aid that they become dependent on it. The government should also invest in health, education, nutrition, roads, power, water and sanitation, environmental conservation, security and several other aspects of society. By removing the problems individuals face that drive them into poverty, they will most likely be able to stay out of it. People should also be provided with the means to earn and be employed. Quality education is one of the most important liberators from poverty. An educated man is a man with many options. Thus, it is important to sensitize children on the importance of education from a very young age and provide them with the same educational opportunities as richer students. As the saying goes, give a man a fish and feed him once, but teach a man how to fish and feed him for a lifetime. The dream of eradicating poverty is a lofty one, but it is a dream that can be fulfilled. Thank you for sparing these few minutes learning from our channel. We hope we've made you better. To learn more, skim through our recommended video section.